So let's continue finding some equations of lines. So let's look at this next one. Find the equation of the line passing through 3, 4, and negative 2, negative 1. Now we have those keywords, find the equation of the line, and that should tell us that we want to use our point-slope equation. So I'll write that down. We want to use this. And let's notice that we do have actually two points that we could use for x1, y1, but what we don't have is the slope. So the first thing we've got to do is find out what our slope m is so we can plug it in there. And so, let's plug into the slope formula. Now it doesn't matter which point I choose to be my x1, y1, and which point I choose to be my x2, y2. So, I'm just going to choose the 4 to be my y2. So I'll have 4 minus negative 1. The one thing I want to be careful about, though, since I chose the 4 first on the top, I have to choose the corresponding x value first on the bottom. So 3 minus negative 2. And then let's see. Now remember, negative negative is really positive, so this is 4 plus 1, or 5. And on the bottom, 3 plus 2, or 5, which gives me a slope of 1. All right, so let's plug in a slope of 1 and either one of these two points. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use this point just because I think it will be cleaner. So let's plug in this as my x1 and my y1. So I'll have y minus 4. m is 1. x minus 3. Now normally I would distribute that, but of course 1 is going to give us exactly the same thing again. x minus 3. And then let's finish solving for y. Let's add our 4. And we get the equation y equal x plus 1. All right, now let's look at another example. First, we need a few little pieces of information. We know what parallel lines are. We know that parallel lines never touch one another. They just run in the same direction, but they never cross. All right, but another thing we need to know about them is they have the same slope. All right, and, and that makes sense. Looking at them, they're sloping up in the same way in, these, in this picture that I have. Perpendicular lines, let's recall, perpendicular lines are at a 90 degree angle. So they're like this. And of course our walls and our floor are perpendicular to one another and it's the best way to build things perpendicular to one another. They have slopes that are negative reciprocals. So for example, if one line has a slope of two thirds, its perpendicular line will have a slope of negative three halves. All right, with that in mind, Let's take a look at the next one. We want to find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to y equals 3x minus 1 and passing through 5, 4. Okay, so first, there's those keywords, find the equation of the line. We know we want to use our point-slope equation. All right, now let's notice that this is in y equals mx plus b form. It's in our slope intercept form. And because it is, we can see its slope sitting right there. Now, the slope we're looking for is perpendicular to this one. So the slope we want is the negative reciprocal. Now remember, this is 3 over 1, so the negative reciprocal is negative 1 over 3. So we're going to use negative 1 over 3, and here's our x1, y1, and let's plug in. y minus 4. m is negative 1 third. 
x minus 5. All right, now fractions are usually the things that people kind of forget how to work with. So let's work through this. Let's think of our 5 as being over 1. And I'm going to multiply the negative 1 third through the parentheses. So I've got y minus 4. Negative 1 third times x is just negative 1 third x. I'm going to clean that up. That didn't mean for that to do that. So negative 1 third x. And then we want to multiply negative times negative here will be a positive. And 1 times 5, 3 times 1. So 5 thirds. All right, now let's finish solving for y. Let's add our 4. Now we need to be able to add these two together. And to do so, we need a common denominator. So, and let me um, move this down just so we have a little more room here. All right, so common denominator. Let's think of making our 4 over 1. They both need to have a denominator of 3 in order to be able to add them together. So just multiply this by 3 over 3. And this is really 12 over 3. And now let's go ahead and add 5 thirds and 12 thirds. So we'll have y equals negative 1 third x. And 5 thirds plus 12 thirds will be 17 thirds. Now be careful about using your calculator. Most of the time your, um, your programs like MyOpenMath are going to want these fractions and they're not going to count decimals. So you've got to get in the process or get in the uh, habit of using those fractions instead of decimals. Okay, now let's look at this last one. Find the equation of the line parallel to 3x minus 4y equals 12 and passing through 4, 0. Now let's remember up here that parallel lines have the same slope, but this line is not in slope-intercept form. We cannot pick off the slope at present. So what we've got to do is put it in slope-intercept form first. We've got to solve it for y. And then we can see what its slope is, and since it's parallel, we'll be able to use the same slope for our m. So let's take this thing and solve it for y. So I will move my 3x to the other side. So minus 3x and minus 3x. That'll still leave me with a negative 4y here. Now since I like my mx to be first, I'm going to put the negative 3x first and my 12 second. Now we're not quite solved for y. We still need to divide out the negative 4. And let's just divide every term by negative 4. So now we have y. Our negative divided by negative will be positive 3 fourths x. And 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. All right, so the line we're looking for is parallel to this one. Let's notice this one has a slope of 3 fourths. So we want to use a slope of 3 fourths since it's parallel. It'll have the same slope. And here's my x1, y1. And let's plug it into our point slope equation. I know my variables are looking kind of weird here. All right, so we'll have y minus 0. m is 3 fourths. x minus 4. Now we get lucky on the left-hand side. We just get y, but let's distribute the right-hand side. And let's think of this as 4 <laughs> over 1. We'll get 3 fourths x. 
and then 3 times the 4 is 12, 4 times the 1 is 4, that'll be 12 <coughs> over 4, and of course we can reduce 12 fourths to 3. And there's the equation of our line that's parallel to this one. And surprisingly, it's the same line. I didn't, need, didn't mean to make up a question where they were the same line, but that's okay.